Is this hair big enough? <laughs> Hey you guys, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. How's your week going? I feel like I've been so out of touch with this community between like moving and things going on in my personal life, but I am so excited to be back. No one tells you, oh the sun, the sun, oh the sun. But yeah, no one tells you that moving like into your first home is actually moving into like a black hole of projects that are just never going to be complete. I don't think I've ever seen anybody, now that I sit back and think about it, I don't see anybody that's ever thought, hmm, I've moved in and everything's done. There are no projects or things that need fixed or redone or redecorated or designed or anything like that. But anyway, today I wanted to share with you guys how I was able to save $20,000 last year. When I announced that I was buying a home like in my personal life off of the internet, my number one question I got was, how are you able to do that? You're just a performer. We don't have to get into the whole like rights or performer you know, defense, but that was like the number one question that I got asked. Hold on, I'm gonna move this because I only have like half light. Cause I... These are my tips on how I personally saved so much money last year to put on my down payment. Number one, I made a needs only budget. Needs only, emphasis on that part. It had living expenses, you know, insurance, things that I needed to spend on a monthly basis, no matter, regardless, regardless of what happened, that money was going to leave my bank account, like my rent, my bills, utilities, all of that. I made a list of it, made sure I knew what was going on. I noted months where they were not going to be the same. Ooh, look at that. I noted months where I paid, you know, my quarterly for different insurances. And I made sure that I kept on top of that each month. That is, I think the most important tip is just know your number. Know your number, how much do you need to spend every month to live? Number two, I taxed myself every paycheck. The government does it, why can't I do it too? At first, I tried to figure out how much I could take out of each paycheck for this tax, but then as last year, you know, I had a lot of changes with employment, I did a lot of like acting jobs and whatnot, so I decided no matter how much money I was making for a gig, whether it was my full-time job or like an acting gig or singing a wedding or giving a lesson or whatever it was, I took 10% of every check that came into my hands or into my bank account, 10% of every check went to savings. It didn't even matter how small the check was. I think one of my checks was like 30 or $40 for like a tutoring session. And I did put that $4, 10% into my account. As the year went on and I did obtain full-time employment and I did, you know, take out my necessities, I was able to put a whole lot more, but just for starters, if you need, you know, if you have inconsistent income and you just need to know how much I can tax, I would say 10% is a good start. And you would be so surprised how quickly your taxing will fill up your savings account. Number three, I created my own conveniences. As a singer, I always want to carry a bottle of water. As a hater of mornings, I always want to go out and get coffee. What I did to kind of, you know, create a convenience is I went out and I got one of those really nice reusable plastic water bottles so I could fill up with my water filter downstairs. And then I got a French press so I could make my old, my old, my own coffee in the morning. These helped me because I don't have to sit here and tell you in this video how quickly buying beverages and small convenience things, you know, can add up at the end of the year or the end of each month. So creating your own conveniences is a wonderful way to help save a little bit of Number four is what I like to call trimming the fat. I got rid of things like cable. I got a discount on my internet. What I actually did, this might not be super like, this is probably a little unorthodox, I guess. Um, my neighbor in my old apartment building, I went and knocked on her door and she and I agreed to share an internet package because we were just divided by the wall. And she and I both shared, I, I got it and I put the router by the wall and I gave her the password and we both just contributed to it. So 
essentially we got half off internet for the one year that we were both there. And then to supplement not having cable, I was able to use friends Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and all of that stuff. You'll see that in a lot of videos. People will say like I cut cable or I found other ways to, you know, have the entertainment in my house at a fraction of the cost. Number five, I became the jack of all trades. I learned how to cut my own hair. You can tell. I learned how to do my own nails, how to mend my own clothes, how to cook my own meals, how to just do all the things that I normally would pay for the convenience of doing. I learned how to do it. And this is not to say that I didn't go out and get like an occasional manicure with friends or go out and get a good meal when someone special came to town. Like that is not the case. I'm just saying nine times out of 10, if I needed to, you know, get my nails done, I would do them. If I needed to trim my hair half an inch, rather than go pay $30 to cut this much hair off, I would trim my hair. On top of that, I also became the queen of scheduling side jobs, what they call the side hustle. I would take a look at my planner, very big, you know, paper planner person, and I would see, oh, I have, you know, X amount of free time on Saturday. Fill it up with teaching voice lessons, singing weddings, babysitting. I would even sell like my neighbor's furniture. If they were leaving and they didn't want to bother selling it, they would either give it to me to sell for my own full profit or they would have me sell it and split it like 50-50. But that little bit of money, usually not taxed money, helps you. I think one of the strangest things I did as like a side hustle is I actually helped like high school seniors prepare for college interviews. You'd be surprised how many kids get really nervous when it comes to sitting down in front of a panel of people who are gonna like decide if they're getting into college or not. And you know, as a performer and somebody who speaks in front of thousands on their own, I kind of just started this small business and even mean to, where I would sit down and I would have like a list of questions that they knew they were gonna get asked and I, you know, gave them tips on, you know, standing, how to, you know, make eye contact, shake, firm handshake, try to remember names, activities to do that. And a lot of my kids, you know, thought that helped them in their college interview process. I didn't mean that to be a side business, but I did it with one of my voice students. Like I just did that to her and then word of mouth, I got like three other kids that called and said, hey, can you tutor me for a half hour for college interview? So you never know where side hustles will come from. Oh, the sun's coming back out, that's really good. Number six, I stopped paying full price for most things. I got a gas card for every gas station uh, in the city, and even if it was only three cents off, that was three cents I wasn't paying per gallon. Um, some of my gas cards actually accumulated to more than three cents, and I'll get to that because I saved quite a substantial amount of money in gas this year. I would use coupons, but only in a way that I was using coupons for things I would have applied on my own without the coupon, if that makes sense. Some people clip the coupons and think, oh, I don't really need this product, but because it's on sale, I'm gonna buy it. And they go and buy it and it goes bad and they wasted that money. Even though they, for example, let's say they bought like apples for a dollar and they had a 50 cent off coupon and they bought a bag of apples for 50 cents, they took it home and it went bad, they just wasted 50 cents. I only used coupons on things that I was going to buy on my own. And it really did help like on average, my coupons were 75 cents, but at my grocery store, they doubled. So I got like a dollar 50 off. It helped with a lot of like shampoo items. If you did get to see my, how I stocked my shower for $10 video, I'll link it right here. But that was an amazing shopping spree. And then when it came to clothing, I was big on like inheriting from friends who were moving. A lot of my friends got pregnant last year, so they didn't want their clothes. They were like, I'm gonna get maternity wear, then buy my own when I have my child or I would just go to like resale shops or online social media groups. Number seven is pretty common. I would use cash only allowances each week. I gave myself between 30 and $50 a week to spend however I saw fit. And then if I had a little bit of extra, I would like either take it for the next week or put it into a little bit of savings. But having a cash only allowance kind of helps you from grabbing cards and just buying whatever you wanted. Cause I wasn't planning on trying to save like 20,000, that's just kind of what it came to. I was trying to just save as much as I could. I think if I had a number, I may have saved a little bit more, but it went really well having just cash. And once it was gone, it was gone. Number eight, I kept a change jar. You would not believe just keeping a little plastic jar. There's one downstairs right now. I'm too lazy to go down and get it because adulting is hard. <laughs> but I have a glass jar downstairs and every day when I come home from my cash only allowance, 
I would, you know, toss a little bit of change into the change jar. I would keep maybe two or three quarters for parking in the city. And then at the end of every couple weeks, if I had like a bunch of ones and my wallet was just a little thick and I didn't like it, I would take a couple ones and pop them out of the wall, throw it into the change jar. I wrote down, because I went to like one of those banks that has a change counting machine, doesn't charge you, excuse me, doesn't charge you for using it. Um, let's see here. My 2016 change jar netted me $274.83 just for tossing in extra change each week. And there were some weeks where I only spent like 20 of my 30 allowance, so I would toss $10 in there. There were a couple fives in there, but for just tossing in change and random bills I wasn't using, $274 is not bad. Number nine is also a little unorthodox, and I'm sure all my budgeting friends are going to hate this one, but I'm gonna be honest and just let it out there. I used my credit card points. Now, before everybody wants to kill me, let me just state that I use my credit cards like a debit system. I set them up that way at the bank. If I spend $100 on my credit card and I only pay 80, I do not pay interest on that extra 20. I have the bank automatically take the 20 out of my savings and pay it off. I do not ever pay a cent, cent of credit card interest. That is not a thing, it is not going to happen. But with that being said, I did set up for all of my bills that I had to pay every month that allowed me to pay through credit card. I set that up so I would pay like my utility bill on a credit card. I think one of my insurances I could pay on a credit card. And then um, every once in a while when I had a big purchase, I would make it on the card and then I was able to use the credit card points. And I know the game they play, they want you to spend a whole bunch because they make more. I know and I get that, but I figure if I'm already gonna pay X amount for a bill, why not let that ride on a card? A, it's already gonna get paid, I don't have to worry about it. And B, at the end of the year, I think I took another 200 plus dollars in Chase credit card points. Again, didn't pay a penny of interest, but I do understand, I do understand why budgeters say no to credit cards. I understand you know, the desire to spend more than you have, I get all of that. And number 10 is I made a vision board of exactly why I was saving all of this money. Because there were times I would see all my other friends who also just got full-time jobs and they would go out and buy a whole new wardrobe and great shoes and they get a new car, just all these things. And I would think to myself, yeah, I have money too, why don't I go out and spend it like them? making a vision board of, you know, you want a home. I didn't know exactly what it looked like, but I knew I wanted to be a buyer and not a renter. So I went on Pinterest, I made a private board. It was called like my future life or something like that. And it had like um, just a couple pictures of small houses because I didn't need a big space. It reminded me why I was saving money in the first place. And I know we all think, oh, saving money is good. I need to do it. But without like a goal end in sight, you can sometimes think, what's the point? I have my whole life to save money. I'm just gonna go out and spend thousands of dollars on things. The vision, the vision board was, was pretty good. And if you guys didn't get to see the home that I'm now sitting in, I will link my empty house tour because obviously these rooms are not ready yet because house is a black hole, like I said, of never ending projects. But anyway, those are my 10 tips of how I saved $20,000 last year. If you have any money saving tips that worked well for you that I didn't mention, I would love to hear them. Just leave them down below. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to click the little red subscription button. It'll update you each and every time I upload a video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.